These are devotions for people at a social distance. My devotions today took me to the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26. Then going a little further on, Jesus fell on his face and prayed. My father, he said, if it's possible, please, please let this cup go away from me. But not what I want, but what you want. He came back to the disciples and found them asleep. So, he said to Peter, couldn't you keep watch with me for a single hour? Watch and pray so that you don't get pulled down into the time of testing. The spirit is eager, but the body is weak. Again, for the second time, he went off and said, My father, if it's not possible for this to pass unless I drink it, let your will be done. Again, he came and found them asleep. Their eyes were heavy. I've always thought that the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is, is one of the hardest parts, the hardest points in Jesus' uh, whole story in the gospel. It's not the worst thing he suffers, of course. The worst thing he suffers is, is up on the cross, unimaginable, um, unimaginable pain and rejection. But, but the thing that makes the Garden of Gethsemane so poignant is that he struggles in being alone. He goes off alone, and yes, he meets God in prayer, but clearly he is in need of human support, and he is unable to get that support from his closest friends, Peter, James, and John. They cannot give it. And that struggling, that suffering in isolation just seems to make it all that much worse. And, of course, this is all so poignant today because there are so many people struggling in isolation. And I think of frontline workers, nurses, doctors, uh, others uh, in the medical profession, and, and others who are emergency workers in various ways. They're struggling. They feel isolated. They can't be close to some of the people that they love. Uh, they can't get that support they need. And maybe that's not the worst thing they're struggling with. They're struggling with, with the stress, with the fear, and, and potentially with sickness, of course. But the isolation that they're struggling with as well just seems to make it so much worse. And it's hard for, for those of us who can't support the people we love and care for. We are kind of like Peter, James, and John, and we just don't seem to quite have it in us to support those people that we may love or we, we feel bad because we can't support them in the ways we would like to, at least. And like Peter, James, and John, we are weary. Our eyes are heavy because these are hard times and nothing takes it out of you, my friends, more than stress. This stress is exhausting us in mind and body and spirit and, and we feel as if we cannot support the people we love in the way we'd want to anyways. These are difficult times. And obviously the Garden of Gethsemane is a very difficult time for Jesus and for the disciples. The whole point of the story of the Garden of Gethsemane is, of course, that if you are struggling with these matters, you're not alone. Uh, Jesus struggled with these things as well which means that God understands. Uh, I mean, that's, that's at the heart, that's, that's the center of our Christian faith, that, that God, because of Jesus, understands the very things that we struggle with. We are not alone as we struggle through these things. That is a comfort. But also, please allow yourselves a little bit of grace. Yeah, you can't support people in the way you'd like to, Yes, you're not at your best, maybe because you're struggling with fatigue or you're struggling because of isolation. Give grace to yourself. It's all right. We will get through. And you know what? The people uh, that you you uh, love, they will feel your support. And yeah, maybe it's not exactly as you'd like to give it. They will know it's there. Find a way to communicate it through the isolation if you can. Uh, but let's be gracious with ourselves. Let's be gracious to one another. We'll find our way through this. Let's pray. God, 
people are struggling so much with isolation, with weariness, with not being able to support the people we love in the ways we'd like to. Help us to be gracious with ourselves. Help us to be gracious with the ones we love. Be patient with ourselves. And thank you for all of the ways, small ways and large ways, in which people are absolutely supporting one another in these stressful times. Thank you. That's a sign of hope and a sign of grace. It always is. And thank you that ultimately we are not alone. Amen. God bless you.